Hello everybody, welcome to Mike Impressions and Reviews. This is going to be the first episode for Rush Song Reviews. Now, to give a little backstory when it comes to the band, they're not the most famous name in the world. If you ask like the average Joe, oh, do you know the band Rush? Do you know the name Rush? They might not have heard of them. So, I mean, they're not a name like, you know, Queen or Kiss or the Beatles. ACDC, Aerosmith, Metallica, you know, something along those lines. But as far as their success, they are one of the most successful bands. Um, if you look at their uh, record sales, they have uh, millions of records sold, multi-platinum band, and they have uh, one of the most dedicated, loyal fan bases that you're ever going to find. They're sort of like a, a cult band in a way. And I think in more recent history, they've become more popular due to things such as uh, Guitar Hero and Rock Band, the video games which have a lot of Rush songs on them. Uh, there was also the movie that came out, I Love You Man, which also mentions about Rush. So I think they're starting to you know, get more attention uh, as far as a band. Um, as far as my introduction to them, I used to watch VH1 years ago and MTV years ago. So there used to be different uh, specials and documentaries where they would just talk about, you know, different rock bands and music and they would mention Rush so you know I would hear their music and a main song when it comes to Rush is Tom Sawyer it's one of the top songs that is played on radio so I heard Tom Sawyer also when I was younger there used to be there might still be maybe but uh, different uh, cable channels where all the cable channels would do is just play music so you would turn on a cable channel and then let's say it was rock music for the 70s so then that channel you just play it and they're just constantly playing different songs from the 70s or another uh, music channel would just be playing songs from the 80s so it's sort of like radio uh, for TV but you would just hear these different songs so I would hear a lot of different Rush songs uh, on these channels as well especially from one of their albums which is called Moving Pictures there was a couple of songs that they would usually play on those different uh, music channels on cable, such as a song called you know, Tom Sawyer and Limelight, and there's another song called uh, YYZ and uh, Red Barchetta, just from that one album. It's one of the more famous albums, so I listened to that. I also had it that uh, when I was going to school when I was younger that I took a guitar class, and my guitar teacher was a very huge Rush fan. I think it was his first or second favorite band uh, between them and the Beatles. So he was always talking about Rush as well. He's like, oh, I love Rush. They're great. And I would hear from some classmates who had listened to Rush as well, uh, how great of a band they were and their musicianship was unbelievable. Uh, so I heard, you know, through them uh, to, you know, look into this band. Uh, as far as hearing uh, the lead singer, Getty Lee, his voice, when I heard it when I was younger, I was like, oh, wow, that's like a high voice, especially some of those early songs. And like, to me, he sort of sounded like a witch or something. So at first it sort of didn't seem like it was going to be my thing and I wasn't uh, going to be into the band. Uh, but then what happened is later on, uh, I had gotten in like a flea market or a thrift store, um, a greatest hits thing. I mentioned this in my Queen video that a lot of times the greatest hits helps you to uh, get introduced to, you know, when it comes to a certain band. So Rush had this greatest hits, uh, I think it came out in like 1990 or something like that. And it was called Chronicles. And with this uh, CD, it had all different songs from their eras, from you know, the 70s, the 80s, and then at the time, you know, going into the 90s. And I got to listen through that and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. I'm liking a lot of the songs and I think I, I like this band. So then, you know, just went from there and started listening to, you know, the different uh, songs and different albums of Rush. Uh, so then quickly they became up there in my rankings as far as like a favorite band. And like I said, they're probably my number two favorite band uh, besides Queen. Uh, but when it comes to Rush, in case you're not familiar with them, uh, interesting thing is that they're a Canadian band. Usually when you hear about a lot of rock bands in like the 70s and stuff and going forward in the 80s, they're either mostly British or American is the main thing. And then you hear about a couple of other countries here and there. So it's kind of rare to hear about a Canadian band. And for sure when it comes to Canada, uh, they're the most successful band uh, you know, of all time when it comes to uh, rock music. So as far as the band Rush... The members are based around the Toronto, Ontario area, and the band was started by Alex Lifeson, whose real name is Alex Zivajinovic. Uh, his parents were immigrants from Yugoslavia, and they went to Canada. And the drummer, when they started the band, was John Rutsey, actually. And then there was a bass player named Jeff Jones, who's actually a black Canadian guy, so many people may not know about that. So uh, two members of Rush, who are the main members, were not originally in the band as it was formed. So when they started out, 
in the Ontario area. This was 1968. It was Alex Lifeson, Jeff Jones, and John Rutsey. And then, you know, they played different gigs in, you know, high schools and different dances in the, you know, Ontario area. And then what happened is Jeff Jones had it that he went to a party a uh, couple of hours before they were supposed to do a gig. So then Alex got his friend uh, who they nicknamed uh, Getty because uh, of his mother, she was always like calling him Getty, uh, that he took over as the bass player. So then the band became Alex Getty and uh, John Rutsey. And Getty's real name is Gary Lee Weinrib, and I believe his family's from Poland, and they were actually Holocaust survivors, and they came from Poland to Canada as well. So two of the three members of the band, uh, you know, came from immigrant families, and then they uh, went to uh, Canada. So the original formation of the band you know, had changed, and then from this point on, it became, like I said, Alex Lifeson on guitar, Getty Lee on bass guitar and lead vocals, and then John Rutsey on drums. And as the years went on, when it came to, you know, 1970, 1971, and going forward, they tried other band members to add to the group, uh, keyboard players, rhythm players. Actually, one of the guys they added to the group, his sister ended up marrying Getty Lee, the bass player. His name was Lindy Young, so then his sister's name is Nancy, and then she married Getty Lee, and that be became his wife, and he had children with her. Uh, but it wasn't working out with these other band members, so then they stuck to the three-member format, which is another, like, rare thing you don't really see in bands, you know, a three-member format. Usually it's either, like, four or five. So it was left at that, that it was Alex Lifeson, Getty Lee, and John Rutsey on drums. Uh, so then they eventually had it that they were able to make a first album and make a debut, and it's a self-titled debut. It's from 1974, and it's called Rush, and the first song is called Finding My Way. And when it comes to this Rush album, it's very different compared to the later Rush albums. Because um, as you might be aware, after this first Rush album, the drummer changed. It went from John Rutsey to Neil Peart. And with Neil, very different kind of drummer. Uh, the, also a big difference is that on this first album, uh, Getty and Alex were the ones who were writing the lyrics uh, for the different songs. And when it came to Neil, when he became the drummer from the second album on, he was somebody who was uh, very educated, very uh, high vocabulary, loved to read books. So he's the one who took over when it came to the lyrics for the songs. So there's a real difference between the first album and the rest of the album. So this first album is very bluesy very just 70s hard rock feel very similar to like led zeppelin uh some people thought that it was a new led zeppelin coming out when they heard uh this record from rush They're like who is that is that the new led zeppelin album or they would call like rush you know like mini led zeppelin basically uh, and that's how they got their start is like after they made the album and it was released there was a dj in cleveland her name was donna halper and she got hold of this album from this canadian band and they were having trouble uh getting the album you know to be popular and also to be popular even in canada where they're from um so their big break was in the u.s because this dj she played one of their songs which is also on this album and we'll discuss in another episode uh, working man became a big hit and then they all wanted to you know go ahead and hear the song played a bunch of times and buy the record so that helped them with their popularity so as far as the song finding my way it has a very cool guitar riff at the beginning it is a good song as far as an intro to the band and an intro for the you know the album and sounds like it'd be a you know great you know concert song so it's like so that part is good i think that's a good like you know debut song uh, but like I said, the, the song is, you know, like a bluesy, hard rock, 70s standard kind of song. Uh, very different from their more progressive songs later on. Uh, so for me, I personally like stuff that's like more adventurous and more progressive. Uh, but as far as the riff, it's a great riff that Alex plays on guitar. Uh, the solo is good too. It's sufficient for the song. I wouldn't say it's a solo where it's like, oh, it's so memorable compared to other Rush songs that we're going to get into, where you remember those solos, you're like, wow, that's a great uh, emotional, memorable solo. But it, it's a good solo. Uh, there's a guitar breakdown, so that's cool as well when it comes to the song. It has a good ending uh, to finish out the song and you know introduce them as a band. As far as the lyrics, uh, like I was saying, with the first album, it was Getty and Alex, and they're not very versed when it comes to words and lyrics compared to Neil, who would join the band later. So a lot of the lyrics are, you know, just like, you know, rock and roll kind of thing, like, you know, love, 
Uh, so like he says in the song, like ma, you know, like that's a bluesy thing, like mama. He's like, ma, I'm coming to get you. Ooh, yeah, ma, I'm coming to get you. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, so the, the lyrics, I mean, there's not much to it. It's just a lot of repeat of words. And it's about, like, finding his way back home, I guess, you know, being on the road that he wants to go back home. And then also about, um, I guess, a girl, you know, trying to come, you know, to her and uh, get going to her. Uh, so, you know, not much to say when it comes to the lyrics. So if I had to rate it out of a 1 to 10, I would say it's... I'll be generous. I'll say seven, either a six or a seven, somewhere around that. It's a, it's a good song. Uh, it has a cool riff. The guitar solo is sufficient, as I was saying before. Uh, but it's you know it's like a standard you know bluesy hard rock song, and they definitely would do more adventurous and amazing things, you know, coming forward. Uh, so that's that song, Finding My Way, which is the first song on the album. So tune in for the next episode where we'll talk about the second song on the album, which is. Need some love. See you soon.